Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I want to say you are all welcome, welcome to this edition of Focus on Islam. It's a full hour program that discusses Islam in Liberia and around the world. And uh, we're so, so happy to be on the Ordo aspect of this program today. We are in the home of the Grand Mufti of the Republic of Liberia, Sheikh Abakar Sumaru. And uh, we are also in the mosque in his house. So that is making this program more intriguing, more exciting for us. So we're going to come and sit here and discuss a very cogent, important topic for all of you today. You know, we have had this issue of problem of unity and love among us. Even among Muslim, among Muslim and non-Muslim, or between Muslim and non-Muslim, and among us ourselves Muslims. So we're going to be drilling into them. He's going to be telling us how important it is for us to have love and unity among us. And what does Islam, the Quran, and the, the Hadith says about unity in Islam? So again, we want to introduce to you the Grand Mufti of the Republic of Liberia, Sheikh Obakar Sumaru. Sheikh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kifalik. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد مجيل لسنس before everything, I would like to greet every one of you with an Islamic greeting. So, salam ala man ittaba al huda wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace of Allah be upon every one of you. Those who follow the truth. Let Allah most send in his peace and blessing to all of you. Today's topic is going around the law between the Muslims and also the unity that must be the rule that can tie the Muslim with another Muslim. Before we go further, before we proceed, we would like to remind you that uh, the relationship between the human and the human is a nature that Almighty God have created between us, regardless to our colors, tribe, and ethnic. Allah say in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Hujurat, "Inna khalakina kum min dakarin wa unta." وَجَعَلِنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Allah said to us, You mankind, I, Allah, have created you and may you tribe and nation have created you from female and male that means Allah have created us from our mother Hawa and our father Adam but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made the children of these two grandparents be in different tribes different ethnic group and different nation. But the Quran have explained to us the wisdom behind that diversity. 
He say, I made you different tribe, different nation, different families in order for you to know one another. For you to be different with your friend in your color, in your nation, in your sex, it is not a sign for your superiority over him. And that is not a cause for you to be segregated yourself over your friend. Both of you are created by Allah. And both of you are the children of the same parent, Adam and Hawa. In this regard, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, La fadla li arabiyin ala ajameen wa la li abiyad ala aswada illa bi taqwa. There's no distinction. There's no distinction for an Arab man against the different tribe. Or there's no distinction for a white man over the black man. But you can be over, you can be exacted over your friend because of the level of the righteousness that might be in your mind, that might be produced by you in your activities. So everybody are equal. The only person is better than everybody is the person that have a clean fit in his mind. He have a clean and acceptable behavior in his daily life. Therefore, we can understand from this that all of us are from seen sources. Source. We from seen source. That is our uh, grandfather Adam and our mother Hawa. And Allah say in Surah An Nisa that He Allah created us min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa basta minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Your, you the Muslims, Allah is calling you and he reminding you that all the mankind were created by Allah from one source, one soul. And through this soul, Allah created the male, the pair, the female from that male soul. That means Allah created our pa Adam first. Later on, our mother Hawa was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the body of our father. And Allah created you to be children, male and female. Those are written in the Holy Quran. But Allah say, fear Allah. Be careful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are calling every day. And be care with your relative. Be care with your relationship with your family members. Therefore, we can understand from this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming to us that no one should be thinking that you are coming from so and so. Among the children of Adam, certain group of people were selected to be in the same fit, even though According to the history of Allah, the history of the mankind that Allah have sent it down in the Holy Quran, 
kana nasu ummatan wahida all the nations all the people used to be on one feet all of them used to be worshiping Allah alone but human being be divided later on due to the misleading effort that have been imposed on them by the shaitan the enemy of the mankind the enemy of the faith the enemy of the truth that shaitan people be divided فَبَعْثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ And Allah sent messengers, He sent prophets to come and give us the glad tidings, glad tidings news for what is going to happen in Yom Al-Qiyamah. And also some of them to come and warn us from doing the evil act and also from being destructive one. Therefore, the Islam was presented to the mankind throughout the history of the mankind. From the time the Allah sent our father Adam, the religion that Adam used to worship Allah with it is not different with it of Islam. The same thing, Sayyidina Ibrahim. They used to be Muslims, as he said. Ijalni mukim al salati wa min duriyati. Rabbana wa taqabbal duaai. In order dua, he said, Wajalna muslimain ilak wa min duriyatina ummatan muslim, muslimatan lak. Wa arina manasikana wa tuba alayna. He said, Allah made me Muslim. That means Sayyidina Ibrahim used to be a Muslim. And Ibrahim born his children, Ishaq. Ishaq used to be Muslim. Because according to Ishaq, Ishaq born Yaqub. When Yaqub was about to die, he called his children, Ma ta'buduna min ba'di. Na'qalu na'budu ilaha ka wa ilaha abai ka Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq ilaha wahida. He said, What you are going to have uh, worship after my death? Yaqub asked his children. Then the children replied, Oh, our Lord, we are uh, our Father. We are going to worship our Lord Allah, the Lord of you and the Lord of your grandparents, your uncles and your parents, your fathers. That one in God will be only God that we can worship and will be Muslim, will remain to be Muslim. In all we want to say here, you the Muslims that have been selected to be on the path that have been described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the Sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Mustaqim is the right path. So Deen and Islam is the right path. And it is good that we all of us, we are crying in the hand of Allah every day with our invocation, telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh God, guide us to the right path. And that right path is not but Islam. Those who join the Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lay the, uh, made the principles between you and your brothers and your, sin, your, fr your friends. He said, Al Muslim, a whole Muslim. The Muslim is the brother for another Muslim. You, the Muslim man, you must have a feeling, you have a belief that you are a brother for the other Muslims. For all the Muslims, all of them should also be considered to you as your brothers. Even though they may be, they may be different with you in your quarrel, they may be in different ethnic groups, they may be from different tribes, they may be from different nations, they may be from different continents. But despite all of that, 
Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is confirming to you, the Muslims of Liberia, that you are brothers for the Muslims of China. The Muslims of Australia, they are brothers for the Muslims of Africa. And the Muslim of women is the bro are the brothers for the Muslim of the black men. This principle was laid down by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we the Muslim, we are dutiful to apply it in our life. And if we do it, then we can be considered, we can be accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In this regard, Allah said to us in different parts of the Holy Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً All the believers are not but brothers. So long you have a faith in your mind, so long you are, believe in, you are believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get a, you get a feel that your brother Muslim has to be your brothers. And you have to consider them as your brothers. And in this brotherhood, you have more duties that you can discharge towards your brother. In this brotherhood, you have a more right that you can receive it from your brothers in Islam. Even though we are not in the position here to explain all those numerous rights, but we're going to select one point among the right that is between you and your brother Muslim. That right is the love. You have to love your friend. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you the Muslims, you will not be good believer. You will not be accepted believers by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except you like for your brother Muslim, what you like for yourself. If you apply this principle to yourself, yourself if you are able to walk on this guideline, that will kill the soul of envy in your mind. That will get ready with a jealousy feeling from your heart and you will be clean, you will be free of jealousy, envy, because the envy is very bad, because if you have somebody that envy a friend, because of the short, uh, small position that you get, or small, the little money that you got, or little progress that you achieve, that is just like you are against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you disagree with the decision of Allah that gave the good love for your friend and may your own love be postponed or be delayed until the other time. Therefore, the first right, we can love for our friends, our brothers, what we love for ourselves. If your brother have any position, you get to believe it, you get to believe it, you get to accept it. If your brother be get, getting progress in his business, that business, you will be happy with it. If you be happy with it, it's possible. As a reward for that happiness, Allah will do the same thing to you. And again, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, يوم القيامة لا يكمل للمرء الإيمان حتى يحب في الله ويبغض في الله ويوالي في الله ويعادي فيه. He said, your faith cannot be correct except you give your loyalty to someone because of Allah. And you give your disassociation to any group or any system because of Allah. And you will love somebody 
because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That law that you can give it to your brother Muslim, it is because you want to love him because he is the good servant of Allah. In the day of judgment, Allah will give the shit, Allah will give the cool place, Allah will give the comfortable host for seven categories of people. Among these seven categories of people, one of them, Rajulani Tahaba Filla, a two men who love one another because of Allah. If you want to be accepted by Allah in the day of judgment, if you want to be protected from the heat of the, your judgment, if you want to be provided with a shade in the day of judgment, where the heat will go in, when a stream and the human being will not be able to stand for it, uh, you should love your friend. If both of you love one another, you love your friend Muslim that is praying within the mosque or that is exchanging the Islamic activity with you. You love him, then you are making yourself qualified to the shade of Allah that is going to be provided for the people who be friendly because of Allah in the day of judgment. I don't know, we to try to, to maybe try to ask some questions. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Sheikh. I think we, we have had a very quick lesson about how to love and unite in our rural countries and like we with no exception. We want to come with all of the quotations from the Quran and the Hadith about unity and love. We want to ask the first question, why is it that we have so much disunity in our rural communities, in our rural areas of worship? That's number one. And as leader of Islam in Liberia, spiritual leader of Islam in Liberia, what are the normally, what are normally, what are the pieces of advice you give to your people? And normally, when they come to you with these issues of disunity in their rural marks, with disunity in their communities, what are your advice to them to ensure that we have this sheer love and unity you try to talk about? Bismillah rahman rahim I agree partially with the question that they have given to me. These unities are not between the Muslims. Even though there may be some time be disagree with one another in some opinions, like the issue of the leadership in some Islamic uh, centers, mosques, schools, organizations, this misunderstanding is created by shaitan. The shaitan yanza rabbeinahum. Allah say, shaitan is someone, he can create a misunderstanding. But that misunderstanding that is created by shaitan, and chunk it, and throw it between the Muslims, we want the Muslims to now follow it to create this unity between themselves. Allah said to us, Murakani, Allah said, You the Muslims, hold with the rope of Allah, with togetherness, hold the rope of Allah in unionism. Do not be divided among yourself. This order it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said to us, وَلَا تَنَزَّعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَيَذْهَبُ رِيهُكُمْ If you be make argument among yourselves and you be divided, the natural strength that you have will go in vain. And the spiritual strength that you have, that will go in vain. Therefore, my advice for uh, my brothers Muslims, my brothers in our Muslim communities, first of all, you should have a love for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will obey him and you will love anything that the Prophet Muhammad gave the order to you to do it. That means the first principle 
that we want all of you, the Muslim people, to do it. Three things. If that be in anybody, that person will, will feel they will test the sweetness of the Islam, the sweetness of the faith. And Yaqun Allah wa Rasuluhu ahabba ilayhi min masiwahuma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be loved by you. And Allah should be loved by you. And the Prophet should be loved by you more than any other thing. You should love Allah more than your property, more than your country, more than your regime, more than your government, more than the global system. You should love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa better than anything that you know beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a, a condition number one. That should be your principle. That should be your mind. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa should be loved by you more than anything. More than your president, more than your government, more than your domestic leaders, more than your global leaders, more than the world, more than your work, more than anything that you may have. Wa yuhibba rajula la yuhibbuhu illa fillah. You can't be a good Muslim that feel the sweetness of the Islam except you love your friend Muslim la yuhibbuhu illa fillah. You are not loving because of any reason except because of the reason of Allah SWT. You should hate that you the Muslim child should return back to be kafir. To be kafir Just like he hate for you to be chung, for you to be sent forcibly into the fire. Therefore, number one, Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love the Prophet Muhammad. If you love Prophet Muhammad, what are you going to do? Lakad kana lakum fi Rasulillah uswatun hasana. You should imitate the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad should be your role model. You want to worship? You must worship according to how Prophet Muhammad introduced that identical worship to you. You want to apply anything in this religion? Go to the scholars. Let them explain to you how it was performed by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you do it the same way. And also you should obey him. Prophet gave any order to you. Nothing must stop you from application or applying or implementing this order. That's a number two. And also you should love the followers, the, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he brought the Islam in Mecca, some people joined Islam with him. Among the people that joined the Islam, number one is Abu Bakr Siddiq. Among the Egypt people, Abu Bakr was the number one who joined the Islam. The Abu Bakr used to be a rich person. He waved his wealth to support the Islam. He used to be a personality. He used that personality to protect the Islam. It used to be a person that a voice is obey. It used a voice, a voice to defend the Islam and to present the Islam to people. So we have to love them. And among the first people that joined the Islam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, among the new uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib is a nephew of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He joined the Islam when he was small. And among the people is Khadija, Prophet Muhammad's wife. And alone, until the Prophet Muhammad gave more than, come in, more than 100,000, all of them, they come and join the Prophet Muhammad. We get to love all of them. And in Liberia today, we are afraid. Some people may not come and create this unity among us by attacking the Sahaba. Some of them, they don't want to love Abu Bakr Siddiq, who is a symbol of our religion, they are uh, claiming, they are protecting that they are Muslim. And like the Shia people are introducing this issue. And they can create misunderstanding between the Muslims and make the Muslim people be affected by, the, by, by, by this misunderstanding. 
And we want to tell the Muslims of Liberia today. Now we are in a critical stage of our in our history. We the Muslims, when you go to Bomi, Bomi County is occupied by 85% Muslims. Cape Man is occupied by 90% Muslims. And when you go to Lofa, it is 65% Muslims. When you go to Majibi, we have 55% Muslims. When you go to Bopolu, that is nearly 75% Muslims. We in this countries, we in this countries, let's draw the strategy to pull all those Muslims, whether you are Gola Muslim, or Mende Muslim, or Majingo Muslim, or you are Va Muslim, or you Bande Muslim or Kizi Muslim, or you are Muslim for any tribe that are not originally Muslim like Gyo and Kran and all of the tribes. Let's all of us draw the strategy to put our hand together. If you put our hand together, we can put our hand together for to achieve two things, two goals now. First, to spread the benefit between one another. We should benefit one another for anything that your friend know that it's one of their necessity now. The second thing, we should prepare ourselves to defend our religion, to defend our community. We do so, then we are protected. We should not look at your friend at our friends because of the diversity that between us, this man is a Va man, the other man is a Gula man, this man is a Madingo man. No. Let's put together and we should create the, the strategy that may make these countries that, that are occupied by majority Muslims. We should do it that these countries should be complied with what we believe. This country should not be a country that may be producing people that may cause another disagreement decision for us. And we are calling on the national decision makers that Liberia, from the day the, the pioneer came, from the day the immigrant came from Morocco, in the 1820, 1821, all four were united. But from that time up to now, there's a unity, unity between us. And there's a law between Muslims and non-Muslims. Peaceful coexistence is going smoothly. And also, the law between the Muslims and non-Muslims is going on. But sometimes you must be uh, you des deserve to be reminded you, uh, you you deserve to be reminded that Shetan can be happy to see peace between the people. Shetan had to bring an idea and uh, personalities that may be the ambassador for the Shetan to make a misunderstanding between the Muslims and non-Muslims sometimes. So we have to avoid it so that our own homes should be the safe haven for us. Our, our own home Liberia should remain the sweet Liberia for us. In the sweet thing, we should do everything possible. We should continue to love one another. Liberia should not be turned turn one day to be a better Liberia. God forbid we don't want to do anything that may be that. Okay, thank, thank you, Sheikha. We have a lot of we have had a lot of time of discussion about unity and love. You listen to him. You just saw him talking about unity in diversity, which is continent and very important for us. We all the time. We just want to take just the next five minutes to just ask this one question. So you ask. You talk about unity in diversity, and that before we go to discuss unity between Muslims and Christians, unity among Muslims. Now there are other sub 
villages coming, Muslim villages coming down the road. We have known Liberians to be purely Sunni countries, right? Right now we have Ahmadis here, we have Shia here. Now as leader of all that you are the Mufti, is it possible how we can do that? We all live side by side. You Ahmadi, but you call yourself a Muslim. You Shia, you call yourself a Muslim. You Sufi, you whatever. Why is that going to work in Liberia? In the last five minutes we got of time. Bismillah ar rahman rahim from 1959, the Ahmadis were introduced to the legislature of Liberia, Ahmadiyya. From 1959, they were registered in Liberia through the legislature that time from England. And they are here from since that time. No Muslim men went, went to any of them one day to disturb them from what they are doing. But that, is, that, that should not force the Muslim men to integrate their, themselves to that stream fit, which has been condemned by the global Muslim whole world, that they are not part of the Muslims. And you're talking about the Sufis, we all of us, we are children of the Sufis. If you can say Tijaniya, there's no room that Tijaniya were not there. But these are the things that can be reformed easily, intellectually, and in a peaceful manner. When you're talking about the schist, from the original, from the uh, original history of Liberia, there's no Shia in Liberia. There's no Shia business in Liberia. But later on, through one of the neighboring countries, and through somewhere, and people, one, one, are coming but we know very well we know very well that this issue has to be handled carefully by the authority because we know at any area in Bahrain in Syria in Gambia in Somalia in Nigeria whenever those people establish sooner they establish first they will create insecurity among people. Sometimes they may go beyond that to stand against the authority of the government of the state that country. This is why we have to declare prior our disassociation with them, the Shia people. When we said it before and we continue to say it, even though they are not yet established properly in Liberia, there are not few people and majority of the people that are coming, they just come from outside. They are uh, calling for it. But we can say that let the government, let the state should be mindful. We should not let the problem to come first before we look for the solution for the problem. And some country in the Middle East, they are facing problem there. And we don't want anybody to go there and learn the problem and come and provide that one for us. We want people to come and educate us and teach our children and be the medicine for us and be the agriculture for us and the relief for us. Thank you very much. This is what we're supposed to say, inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikh Abakal Small. He's the Grand Mufti of the Republic of Liberia. And to our many viewers on Real TV Channel 3, we want to say thank you very much for viewing this program. It comes out every Friday from 5 to 6 o'clock on Real TV. We hope you join us next Friday, same time, same station, for another edition of the program Focus on Islam. We've been discussing unity and love in Islam. We hope and pray that you have learned a lot from this program. My name is Musa Akene and Solomon Ware has been my camera man. Until we meet again, I want to say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much.